Okay, welcome back my friends to the show that never ends. We're so glad you could attend. Come inside, come inside. So today we want to continue our discussion with respect to heat treating, but we want to look at um, the capacity for a process, for a, uh, process called hardenability. All right, so today we're going to talk all about hardenability. And I guess the first thing we need to do would be to uh, adequately define this. And so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, it is the ability of a steel to partially or completely transform from austenite to some fraction of martensite at a given depth below the surface when cooled, or what we call quenched, under a given condition from high temperature. So, I'll write that again. Again, it's the ability of a steel to partially or completely transform from austenite to some fraction of martensite at a given a given depth below the surface below the surface when cooled or what we were usually refer to as quenched the term quenched under a given condition from high temperature. Okay, so that's a really well-rounded uh, definition. Uh, I'll kind of summarize it here in a minute. But I think we need to make a couple of points right quick uh, on terms within this. And uh, I think we need to look at review kind of austenite, martensite, and quenched. Now, austenite is simply the uh, the gamma phase, iron phase um, of steel, and that's at elevated temperatures. And of course, the austenite, the austenite, is the gamma iron. All right, and it will always be above 1333, of course. Um, but it is, most importantly, an FCC structure where we have the maximum amount of carbon absorption in that phase of austenite. All right, so now what we're trying to do is retain as much of that uh, carbon in this end uh, uh, product before it just uh, diffuses out. And so... If we're able to do that, it's going to turn into something we call, and we saw this when we were looking at the IT diagrams, the time temperature transformation diagrams, something called martensite. All right, and martensite uh, is very much uh, what heat treaters seek to accomplish uh, in their process to obtain a martensitic structure of some percent or some fraction. Because it's the hardest, the strongest, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but it, it does retain the same amount, basically, of the carbon that the FCC, but it does it in a completely different crystalline structure known as a body-centered tetragonal, or a BCT, a body-centered tetragonal. Okay, now it is, the formation of martensite is a diffusionless, a diffusion less process all right it does not have time to precipitate out or change over 
So it's more of a really fast kind of a shearing action that, that takes place to form this martensite, what we call sort of an atomic bedlam taking place to form this martensite. Because uh, it's going, again, from almost instantaneously from an FCC lattice structure to a BCT lattice structure. So it, it does it very, very rapidly, very, very quickly. Now, um, there are three uh, factors in the formation, three factors we need to mention with respect to the formation to the... Uh, formation, the martensitic, that affect, let's see, three factors, let's put it this way, that affect the formation of martensite, all right, uh, and those would be simply, first and foremost, the uh, composition, composition of the alloy and the second would be the type and character of the quenching media the type and or character of the quench medium whatever it might be and again of course we have basically brine water and oil to work with most of the time and then last but not least is the actual size and shape of the part. All right, the size and shape of the part. Let me write that, of the part. That's gonna all affect whether or not how much martensite can, can be uh, formed. All right, and so quenched again is just a very, very rapid cooling, and uh, we define that primarily as either using brine, which is the most aggressive, then water, and then oil. Okay. All right, so with that, with that taken care of, with respect to um, just a basic kind of deformation, def definition, um, essentially, we can kind of summarize it uh, in the fact that it essentially kind of just means that it's the relative capacity of a steel to be hardened by transformation to Martin site. Okay, so this is the real specific long-winded version of what hardenability is all about. This is the kind of the down and dirty here basics, the relative capacity of a steel to be hardened by transformation to Martin site. All right, now, with that said, we can make the following assumption uh, or statement, and that is that... Uh, Steels with good hardenability, let me write this, let me erase some of this stuff, it's getting kind of messy here. Get the terms out of the way. And so we could now state that steels with good hardenability, all right, uh, can be hardened more deeply, in other words, how thick below the surface, more deeply below the surface and do not require high slash you might say slash aggressive uh, quenching methods in other words it's going to take slower and still get uh, some results okay all right now uh, next thing 
is that uh, looking at hardenability, obviously hardenability, as, as we said a moment ago, those factors, the first one was composition. So harden, hardenability hardenability uh, of a steel is increased through alloying. In other words, adding various elements. And, and some of the alloying, uh, some of the top, when we listed some of those uh, before, but the top three of these that really affect this uh, ability to increase the hardenability of a, of a steel is uh, chromium, is one, uh, manganese is another, manganese, and our friend molybdenum, all right, molybdenum, all right, so those three kind of, when those are added, along with carbon, higher, con higher composition, it will all uh, have the steel have a greater hardenability, all right, but the effect of this, the mechanism, why this happens, uh, the mechanism, the actual, the mechanism involved uh, in increasing hard, in, incre in increasing hardenability, the alloying, uh is reflected in moving the remember we called it the uh pearlitic nose on the IT diagram to the left, okay, to the left. Um, and so that's the net result of that. Now, let me show you what we're talking about with respect to that. Um, essentially, what we're looking at here is that, if you recall the, the IT diagram looking something like this, and and we had kind of this S curve like this and uh, essentially what we're doing in fact let's let's do it this way uh, you could have something that looks like this with a with a, just a normal steel let's say uh, that would look like this and and uh, in order to get a martensitic structure, a complete martensitic structure, you'd have to have the cooling rate curve slide past this nose. It could not touch this nose because anytime it gets into this area, it's going to turn into either perlite, bainite uh, mixture. Okay, so essentially what happens is the more and more um, alloying elements like the chromium, molybdenum, and manganese, essentially what takes place is is that this nose is moved more to the right okay i just move this over to the left but it essentially moved this nose to the right so this this is see all of a sudden gets a greater gap here so that that you have a much much better chance to because this this line obviously represents martin site start because everything below here is martin site so that's the net effect of this uh adding alloying elements. It moves that nose to the right, opens this gap up, so you can do it in a much, much slower time in respect to doing it very quickly if the nose is very far over to the left. Okay? So that's the net effect of that. All right. Now, one last thing I want to say here before I think we're going to have to uh, cut this short a little bit. Um, but the main thing, I would, well, not the main thing, but the main correlation we can make from all this is that um, hardenability 
You cannot use these two numbers interchangeably, in other words. Hardenability and hardness are not the same, okay? They're not the same. Uh, we just describe what hardenability is. Hardness is just a representative value of a certain har of a, of a of a metal uh, with respect to a certain hardness test or scale. So that's what hardness is. But hardenability is the is is the capability of that steel to be uh, form to to transform into martensite. So that's what hardenability is about. Now, the main thing. The way we test this, okay, the test, prescribed test um, for this hardenability is actually uh, called, a number is an ASTM test number of, uh, let's see, A255, all right, the test for hardenability. Uh, is referred to or is called the Jomini in quench test. Okay, the Jomini in quench test. And so, what I want to do is on since I'm running out of time here, I need to stop this. But the very next video, I will go over the complete rundown of this Jomini in quench test for hardenability and show you how it works and what it represents, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll do that in the next video. And so we'll see you in a little while after I get this uploaded, which takes quite a while.